Hello once again everyone. So uh, a couple weeks ago we talked about the dagger sparring rules. Now we're going to go over the staff sparring rules. So we have a staff class here at RCH and they've been doing really good. We've been going for about a month now, month and a half. And sparring with staves is a very dangerous thing because unlike with the daggers or the long swords or whatever, there is no really good synthetic version of a quarter staff. There is just a quarter staff. Sometimes you can get slightly lighter woods, but that's really not fantastic. Um, the staff that I'm using is made of maple. His is made of, is yours ash or hickory? It's hickory. Yours is hickory. Uh, most of the people here are using hickory staves. They're not too heavy. Um, you also notice that Jared's here has um, thrusting caps on the end. That's usually a good idea to have, just in case things start to fray. Mine does not. Um, not necessarily required, but recommended. So how do you safely spar with quarter staves? using the gear you have access to. Um, for example, like playing with axes, and things like that, you should be wearing armor, um, or at least partial armor. With staves, though, throwing on armor for it, you might as well just be playing axe, so it doesn't really make a ton of sense. So basically, the way you need to treat this is the same way that we've talked about cutting people nicely in general, right? When I cut someone, I am not putting as much energy as I would into it if I was looking to fully debilitate and kill them, right? I'll tell you right now, as a martial artist, when I fence, I am not striking, I'm striking well, but I'm not striking with the intent to kill that I would if I were actually worried about putting someone down. And that is an important difference to make. And if you haven't thought of that, you should maybe meditate on that. Right? You should investigate this thoroughly. But, obviously with the stick, if I strike for real, it's, it's going to destroy that fencing mask and he will not play with me anymore. So I don't want to do that. So, just like when I am you know, playing with the sword, I'm going to learn to just, that's more than enough. That hits about the same as a longsword. Yeah. Yeah. Just about there. And I am never putting more juice than that. Now, the way you can achieve that, especially with strikes, is going to be when I go to strike, if I were to strike for real, I would have both hands relatively firm. I'm putting my core into it and striking through. Versus if I am striking like this, I'm going to let this hand come in to shoot the point out more and I let my front hand relax, so that way it just taps. That's even on the harder side of taps. Most times it's gonna be just that. This, you can still do it while applying all the normal mechanics you would, but it's not going to hurt him with practice. And I recommend, before you ever try sparring with staff, you need to practice with the staff on a dummy for about a month. I say that with entire firmness. I did not let this class start sparring with each other until they'd done a month of training. And I am glad we did that. Now, strikes, that's relatively simplistic, right? I can learn to make those quite gentle. The part where it's going to get a lot less gentle is with thrusts. Because unlike with our swords, which flex, in fact, sometimes getting thrusted is safer than getting cut, these, they don't flex at all. So, how do you safely thrust at somebody without hurting them? Because if I thrust for real, that's going to meet and it's going to push his head back significantly, and that will hurt him either by collapsing the mask, waffling him so the mask strikes him, or I could basically give him whiplash. So, we at RCH have decided that we do what is called plant and push. So, we come into like a bind or something along those lines. We're here. I wind up and I move in and I place on him. Now, just placing on someone isn't necessarily the end of the action. For example, these things don't have blades on them. If we were working with spears and I just get that, we know that sharp thing will hurt him. But with a staff, if we were fighting for realsies, that's not doing anything, right? Now we know that for realsies, historically I would jam it in there. That's not what we're looking for. So instead, we just alter the order a little bit. I'm going to plant, and then I should have the firmness to physically move him a little bit. He feels it, I feel it, but it doesn't hurt, and it doesn't compromise the body structure I'm trying to learn. So, I will now show one of those with proper speed. Well, let's have you attack me, I'll parry your post. Here. I didn't jam him. Did it hurt? No. He's just wearing a gamson, he doesn't have a solid plate underneath. Plant and push is how I recommend you do it, and a good way to practice is to just do parry your post like we just did. You partner up, he attacks me, I parry, I plant, I push. Nice and simple. If you hit with any sort of force on the way in, you need to calibrate. Okay? Now, 
The other one, the one more common, is going to be flung thrusts. And those are super dangerous. Because, of course, when I flung thrust, to get it going out at speed gives it more force. You can strike quickly without force with a lot of other weapons. This, they're kind of linked. So how do you do that safely? You need to learn your range. And for the first sparring with it, I recommend you just go ahead and not do flung thrusts until you're comfortable doing this. When you are ready, when you have done enough practice, and be honest with yourself because, again, there is no safe version of this weapon. You have to be honest with yourself here, right? You need to make sure that you have your range down to a T, okay? So that way, when I flung thrust Jared, at most, I do that much. And even then, I would probably say sorry, right? That's just on the edge of it. A good way to make this safe and to get used to it is to make sure flung thrusts are directed toward the top of the chest, this sort of area, because that's where the most padding is. Then, when you are more confident, when you have learned, then you can get used to touches on the mask. So, the next question we'd have is, of course, wrestling and running in and wrenching, because as we know, the staff can turn into a wrestling tool very easily. I would say for the majority of your stuff, focus on just striking with the staff or thrusting with the staff. Worry about the running in and the wrestling way down the line, because one, those opportunities are only going to come up when you actually know how to fight with the stick, and two, it's a good idea to get into the habit of, you know, if we end up close, like Q on Q sort of close, we should be focusing more on distance and getting ourselves back to ideal fighting as opposed to launching into a grappling action because with a lot of the staff stuff, it does very quickly turn into hard wrenching motions that are absolutely useful to learn, but if you mess them up, you're now in hand on hand grappling. So save that for down the line, I would say. But now what we're going to do is Jared and I are going to, I'm going to throw on my mask, and we're going to show three speeds, three tiers, if you will. The first tier we're going to show is that baseline, very new. So we're going to go pretty slow. We're going to just focus on techniques that we've been working on in class. Uh, so we did Victorian and the Boy Scout manual, and we just started on Meyer. So we're going to do those techniques and pretty much stick to those techniques. And there won't be any flung thrusts, and there certainly will not be any sword grip stuff. Right? In general, just go ahead and ban sword grip for down the line, because being able to, for example, here, doing that with control takes a lot of practice. Being able to do that in a free flow setting is even harder, so just don't worry about it. Make it so you have to have two hands on the staff. Okay? Um, so that's going to be our first level. The second level, we will start ramping it up a tiny bit. We will start being a little bit more Adventurous, we'll add the flung thrusts in. And then the third level will be everything we know. Even then, that's probably only going to about 50% of our normal fencing speed at most. And Jared and I are quite comfortable with each other. So, I will now get my stuff on and we'll show exactly what that looks like. Um, for required gear, by the way, make sure that you are wearing all the turning legal gear you would normally have. I have on you know, rigid elbows, rigid knees, cup of course, making sure that you have spez heavies, things like that. Your targets are going to be striking to the head, obviously not the back of the head, striking to the elbows or forearms gently because we know you could break bones if you struck there. We don't personally believe that strikes to the outside of the arm will do anything. I mean. Anyone who's done a decent amount of hand-to-hand -hand martial art, they're pretty used to taking blows there. A staff is probably not that far out of the realm of it's not going to stop you in the fight. Thrusting to the belly or to the chest, striking into the ribs, and depending upon how advanced your players are, you can look at setting up strikes to the knees. Generally, I'd say just don't worry about it. Thrusts? Yeah, totally. You know, thrust onto the top of the thigh or things like that. That's just taking the low opening. But now Jared and I will showcase that. First we will go at our polite speed. Yep. So plans in place. We'll do three of each. Yeah, pretty much. 
put my hand into that. That was all you. Okay? So that was our light speed. Now we're going to add the flung thrust and slightly increase the speed. So in that case, obviously we don't have spear points. While we touched each other, that was more of a, that was, we didn't do our jobs, let's reset, as opposed to an actual point. And you should treat this less as like fighting for points and more, was I defending myself? So, now for the third one, top third speed, third fight. So especially on that one, stepping backward with my flung thrust to both defend myself and not hurt Jiren. Now we will go to our final speed, where everything we know is on the table. Okay. Yeah, I'd give you that. All right. Thank you. And that's about as fast as you ever need to go. I mean, there are plenty of dynamic actions in there, plenty of back and forth, plenty of things to work on and learn from, right? And that's really the way you should be playing it because, again, this is a very dangerous weapon, right? As you get more confident, you can start ramping things up, but it never got to the point that it was dangerous for either of us. So. And as a note, of course, the staff is the universal pole arm trainer. So, you know, switching hands, doing different styles of fighting, it comes up. Every culture fought with a stick. So you can really start adding to this a lot down the line. We mostly stuck to Meyer and Boy Scout stuff at the moment, but that's okay because that's what came up. So, either way though, thank you very much, Jarrett. And we'll talk about some other rules for fighting and techniques another time.